Hi, today we'll be discussing the uh, analyzing and statement of cash flows for Abercrombie and Fitch uh, as part of the uh, accounting project week seven uh, for uh, Grand Canyon University. My name is Keith Morris and I will uh, attempt to um, kind of give the high and low points of what's going on um, and there'll be a PowerPoint that will be attached to this uh, presentation as well. So um, obviously we're talking about um, a couple things, just a little history on Abercrombie and Fitch. They've, they've faced quite a bit of headwind for um, kind of what you might call some bad management practices, some uh, social pressure for kind of their sexualization of their stores. Um, you'll see that borne out within um, the statement of cash flow and also the um, income statement that's included within these <coughs> documents. But it is interesting to see um, and I took a three-year snapshot from 2017 through 2019 just to get an idea of um, what was going on with the company. And, and if you have the time, it's interesting to read some of the things that are going on under under the sheets uh, or under the covers. Not just to mention that, but also changes in the fast fashion industry itself um, are also offering some pretty, uh, pretty strong headwinds uh, for the company. So when we're talking about analyzing uh, the cash flow, we were really looking at it from three perspectives, uh, operating, um, investing, and then financing activity related to um, those. Um, so interesting to note that the the operating, uh, the net income for 2019 was uh, 30, uh, 39 million, uh, which is uh, almost half of what it was in 2018, um, but uh, significantly um, still better than uh, 2017, which came in significantly lower. Um, a huge uh, portion of their net income or the reversal would have been coming from uh, depreciations, am depreciations and amortization, which is actually lower um, than prior years, but still within, I would say, the average, lower end of the average for the prior three, three years, which was interesting. From an, ex an expense uh, cash flow portion of on the investing part, there is a 2x uh, cap x increase uh, expenditure, which is huge, which is a, a very big difference. And you'll see that coming all the way through their earnings per share and um, and through um, some of their other other obvious um, uh, uh, things, uh, but, but which is a startling thing. So I think they're going through according to my branding is rebranding, remarketing, um, kind of rethinking who they are. So I think that's part of it. On the financing side, um, some of the source of cash came from some um, fairly hefty stock buybacks, which they're um, continuing to do. I, I would I would as, um, assume so if you look at the income statement, you look at earnings per share at down 44%, I believe it was. Um, they're, gonna, they're trying to bolster um, some of that through stock buyback purchases. Um, some of the major uses of cash um, on the operating, investing, and uh, financial side. Uh, a major use of cash, even though it's kind of below the operating line, but it was there is an extreme amount of money being used um, for CapEx. Obviously, um, wages and fringe and all those things are also listed within uh, the cash flow, but um, the CapEx is pretty big at 203 million. Um, investing, again, it's we're talking about the capital expenditures related to rebrand and repositioning, um, which is significant for 2019. And then finally, um, some of the interesting things that I found in the financing side was there seems to be a pretty decent debt uh, buy down, 20, uh, $20 million, um, the stock buyback, and then um, and then some of the dividends, there was um, some, uh, there was less pressure on the dividends, um, but it was stable. Um, Difference between uh, net income and cash used by uh, used by operating activities. The major differences: the net income versus cash, uh, which shows how much profit was earned in the given period. Um, it's carried over from the income statement, which is shown. Um, it's it's kind of the starting point for calculating cash flow. A uh, cash flow shows kind of the day by day detailed look. So an example here um, would be our sales and receipts, payments, taxes, and then, and that and then that nature. And then it also reflects changes uh, to some assets and liabilities in the balance sheet. Uh, overall, and we'll get to this is when we get to the week eight assignment, is some of the financial strengths, perhaps you could say. Um, one is it's, it appears that the company is turning the corner on total top line revenue, um, which is a positive indication. Uh, they're investing in capital projects, so they're reinvesting some of that money back in. Um, and then I think it's a net positive that they're repurchasing some of their shares. Um, I think that's going to be uh, critical for them in the future. Um, some of their financial weaknesses, um, there's extreme pressure uh, just related to the industry itself. I mean, there's a lot of competitive pressure if you look at Old Navy, um, some of the other fast fashion folks, lots of pressure on margin. 
Um, also, the EBITDA uh, has taken uh, gone down significantly. The uh, earnings per share was down 44%. So that's a pretty pretty uh, um, pretty significant number. And then finally, um, kind of the social pressures uh, continue to mount, even though they're kind of they're getting rid of those. If you look back to 2017 and top line revenue when things really started to get tough. Um, they seem to be kind of crossing that threshold, uh, but it's still a super competitive marketplace. And that brings me to my last point, which is there's significant changes in the fast fashion industry, uh, brick and mortar, um, as well as online due to COVID. Um, and just, of course, the, the changing tastes of, uh, of the consumer. So all in all, um, I would say that, you know, if you were looking and I'm, I'll dig into this into week eight, but if you look at it, um, it could be a potentially good investment based on how they're how they're moving money back into their company and making things happen. Um, but top line sales still are a little iffy. And then, of course, the bottom line, that margin pressure and the EBITDA pressure um, is still significant. Thank you.